couldn't understand forgiving those that had done him wrong. Amen. Listen, the devil can understand. He can understand your wrath. The world can understand your wrath. People can, you can find somebody, it ain't hard. There's so many of them you can't stir them with a stick. You can find somebody that'll sit in on somebody with you. You know, you can come up and say, oh, you know them people over there. They did me bad. They did me wrong. And you won't have any trouble finding somebody to say, yeah. If I was you, I wouldn't talk to them. If I was you, I wouldn't end up do with them. If I was you, I'd do what I'd see what I could do. You know, just see what you can do to get back at them. Get your revenge. Get back at them. You know, take your wrath out on them. You won't have any trouble finding that. But whenever people find you forgiving those that they know have done you wrong, they can't comprehend that. That must be something greater than lies within me. With whenever I was a child of disobedience and a child of wrath, you must have something. Something must be working in your life that is greater than what I've got because I can't stand the sight of them people because of what they've done to me. But here I find you forgiving. And I told you last week we're going to look at somebody else this morning. Go to Acts the 6th chapter. The book of Acts, the 6th chapter. And we're going to talk a little bit this morning. Name won't keep you too awful long. Iron half, two hours at the moment. <clears throat> About Stephen, the Bible says, was a man full of faith, full of the power of God. In Acts, the 6th chapter, in Acts, the 6th chapter, beginning in the first verse, and we're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read a couple of verses, then skip down and read a couple of more. It says, In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, then arose murmurings of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. In other words, there were needs to that had to be taken care of in the ministry and they needed to appoint men to do that. And one of the men that they appointed, they appointed seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost, and one of those men was Stephen. The Bible says in the fifth verse, and the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen, a man full of the faith, full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in verse 8 of chapter 6 in Acts, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And then we see, as it always is, it stirs up trouble with the enemy's people. They don't like Stephen. They don't like what he's doing. So what do they do? They get some people to falsely accuse him of blasphemy. They get some people to bring him before the rulers and say, this man has done this and this, and he hadn't done any of the things they were accusing him of. He was falsely accused, railroaded into this court. And he stands before these people and he preaches a sermon that would cause the hair to stand up on the back of their neck. That would scald their hide. He calls them stiff-necked, uncircumcised in heart and ears. And he preaches to them about Jesus. And he preaches to them about the prophets. And the Bible says that these men, when they didn't want to hear no more, they put their hands over their ears and they ran and they jumped on Stephen. And they began to beat him. They began to hurt him and they begin to... The Bible says when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of the on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open. Now listen, this is a man who's being beat to death. They fix to take him outside the city. They're going to throw stones at him and kill him. Why? Because he's a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. And he's preaching the gospel and he's doing good things and he's working miracles among the people and they're seeing signs and wonders and people being healed. And they say, We can't have this. He's stirring, he's doing the same kind of things that Jesus was doing, and we can't stand for that. So we're going to do the same thing we do, did with Jesus. We're going to false accuse Him and we're going to bring Him before the court and we ain't going to have no trouble at all putting this man to sleep because the people will be with us. They'll be behind us. we got a whole religious crowd that don't like this Jesus stuff. They're still around today. Amen. They're still around today. So here this man is 
And they cried with a loud voice and they, they stopped their ears. Meaning they held their hands over their ears and they stuck their fingers in them. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. Here they are, jumped on him, gnashing him with their teeth, and he says, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man upon. And he says, I can see standing, the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. I see Jesus. <laughs> they jumped on him, they're beating on him, and he says, I see Jesus. And he put their fingers in their ears, and the Bible says they grab a hold of him and they bring him outside of the city. And they stoned him. Listen to this. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at, the young, at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen. And Stephen, the Bible says, was calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down. And he cried with a loud voice. Now listen, Paul was a... At the time he was Saul, but he was a religious man. Oh, he was strict religious according to the law. Eye for an eye. Amen? He could have understood had Stephen fell down on his knees and cried with a loud voice, Avenge me of mine adversaries. Call upon the angels from heaven to kill these people. Bring down the fire. Paul could have understood all that. Or Saul, excuse me. He wouldn't be Saul for much longer. He could have understood that, but that's not what Stephen cried. It says he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The last words he said were, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Can you imagine that? Just like that centurion could have understood wrath. Saul could have understood. Oh, they're beating him. They're hitting him with rocks. He'll begin. He may have even thought, you know, he'll, he'll uh, deny Christ at any minute. I'm going to stand here and watch as he denies this false God that he claims to serve that goes against our law, that goes against everything that we've ta been taught over the years. And he waits for that to happen and instead of doing that, Stephen says, I see Jesus standing in the right hand of God and then he says right before he dies, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. My goodness. So what does Stephen do with his last breath? The same thing Jesus did with his. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. What are we talking about, church? We're talking about forgiveness. Oh, my, my, my. It's one thing to talk the talk. It's another thing to walk the walk. They hear it talked all the time, but when they see it walk, that's whenever it makes a lifetime impression. Yeah. And can you imagine? Paul might have stood, Saul, the other people might have stood back and thought, he's out of his mind. How many times have you thought when someone that you know, a certain individual had did them really wrong, had did them dirty, yet somehow they found it in their heart to give them a second chance. Somehow they found it in their heart to forgive them. And you sat back and thought, they're crazy. They've lost their mind. They probably thought that about Stephen. They probably thought he's lost his mind and you know what he had. He had lost his mind. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. That's what had happened to Stephen. Amen. He didn't have Stephen's mind of carnality thinking anymore, Brother Sleeves. He had the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the mind of Christ does not look at your enemy and say, kill him, destroy him, and send him to hell. No, the mind of Christ looks at him and says, Father, please forgive him. Oh, we can't grasp that this morning. When that there takes place, that's something outside of this old carnal mind and body. Yeah. That's a supernatural, miraculous thing that has taken place. And when Saul sees this, I believe that he sees the same face of forgiveness, the same face that Jacob saw in Esau, the same face that the centurion saw in the face of Jesus as he hung on the cross. I believe he sees the face of God in the face of forgiveness. Oh, and this would have a lasting impression on the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, listen to this. Hey, Brother Willie, how do you know this? Jump over to the book of Acts. 
Well, we're only in Acts. The seventh chapter. I'm sorry, the ninth chapter. Acts, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> Acts the ninth chapter, first verse. The Bible goes on to tell us some more about Saul, who was at the time public enemy number one of the church. And Saul, verse 1, chapter 9, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of them letters to Damascus to the synagogues that he that if he found any of this way, talking about Christians, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the ground, the Bible says, and he heard a voice unto his, saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? I can you imagine this. Here Saul is, traveling along you know, with his band of whoever he had with him because they all get scared and run off, I think. And he falls down and he hears his voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he says, Lord, who are you? These men were with him probably thought, man, he's lost his mind. Because they wasn't having the same experience that Saul was. They might think he's talking to himself. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Now listen to what Jesus says to him next. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? Now if you're just reading that, you may not understand what that means, but I'm going to tell you what that means. That means, is it hard for you, Saul, to resist me like you've been doing? How easy have you found it to resist me? The Bible doesn't say this, but I'm going to assume the fact that Saul was a man and I'm a man, I can imagine, after seeing Stephen stoned to death, after seeing him ask forgiveness, I can imagine he might have had some dreams about that. I can imagine he might have woke up in some cold sweats remembering that and wondering, how could this be? I don't understand it. Oh, an eye for an eye, I can understand. But I know that they had, they had gnashed on this man. We stood by and watched him being stoned to death for preaching what he thought was the truth. And yet instead of cursing them, instead of denying this Christ, he says, lay not this sin to their charge. I don't understand that. And Jesus says to him, is it hard for you to kick against the prick? Now the prick was a long wooden shaft that had something pointed on the end of it. And when you were guiding your oxen, if you couldn't get him to go fast enough, if you couldn't get him to turn the direction you wanted to, you'd poke him with a stick that had the prick on the end of it there. Prick him with it. And sometimes the animal, when you were trying to nudge him in the right direction, he would kick against that. He would go back, and when he did, it would make the... It would make that wooden stick with the sharp end go that much deeper in his flesh. Honey, the more you fight against the convicting power of God, the more it hurts. The more you resist God, the deeper the conviction strikes you. And Jesus says to Saul, who apparently he had already been dealing with, he had already felt the convicting power of God, he had already been resisting his call. He said, is it hard? Is it hard, Saul? And I submit to you today, that in Saul seeing what happened to Stephen and the face of forgiveness that he saw in that man had such an impression on him that he was dealt with from that moment on. Even so much. So listen, don't tell how many people Saul had stood by and seen murdered. Martyred for the cause of Christ. But he mentions one in Acts 22 and 20. He says, The blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed.